Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Salali Pop and this is the brand new 2022 Trek Roscoe 7. Now this is kind of an improv video since I just saw this bike come into our store and I wanted to make a video on it for you guys. But like in every single one of my videos, I will be going over all the specs on this bike and what I think about each of them. I'll give you some nice video shots of every single part on this bike so you can see what it looks like on camera. I'll be weighing the bike in this frame size right here, which is in a size medium large. Large. and at the end of the video I'll give it a nice test ride and give you my initial impressions and overall thoughts and if the bike is worth the price point. And if you do like videos like these and enjoy this video I'd greatly appreciate you liking the video and subscribing to my channel and give me any comments and any suggestions or feedback if you want me to make a video on a specific bike or you want me to change anything or things like that. I'm really open to feedback so I'd really appreciate it. So without wasting any more time let me grab my camera and I'll show you this whole bike. And here it is. Here is the 2022 Trek Roscoe 7 in all of its glory. But before I get into any of the actual components on this bike, I do want to quickly mention that the price is currently 1830 US dollars. Uh, and it is currently available at Trek Bicycle in Sacramento Midtown where I work. Um, this one is in the size medium large as I mentioned. And while I talk about that frame size, I'll also mention that I did weigh this bike in at exactly 32 pounds and 4 ounces and I weighed it from the seat itself. Uh, on Trek's official website in a size medium, so a slightly smaller frame size, the bike is claimed to have a weight of around 30.8 pounds. So this one's definitely a little bit heavier than that. 30.8 pounds would have been better for sure, but uh, I'll see if I can weigh some more bikes uh, in the future and let you guys know if that weight was correct or not. This bike is specifically in the color Miami green and it has a pretty nice paint job as you can see. We have the kind of the black splatter paint on here and one thing I actually did not know about this paint job uh, looking at it through images on Trek's website is that the splatter paint is actually kind of like 3d like you can feel the paint splatter as if it was actually splattered with paint and I really do like this kind of like teal cyan color that they have going on here overall I think the bike looks pretty nice but you'll definitely see that as I walk more around the bike for now let's talk about the actual specs on this one so this bike uses an alpha gold aluminum frame from trek uh, alpha gold aluminum is not their highest end aluminum but it's still pretty high end you can see we have the seven logo right there to dictate that this is a roscoe seven and alpha gold aluminum just means that it's fairly strong fairly lightweight it does have some smooth welds on there so you can see um, that's kind of hard to see the welds unless you come really close to the bike so that's nice just makes the bike look a little bit nicer now some cooler stuff for this bike we do have iscg mounts right here for a chain guide or a bash guard if you want to do some really intense riding and are worried about damaging your chain or it falling off the bike or anything like that so that's good to see the frame itself does have some nice rubberized protectors so on the down tube here so protect against any rocks and things like that and also keep it a little bit quieter same with the chain guard right here so this will help keep the chain noise down as well as protect the frame itself from the chain hitting it and causing any paint damages. So a very nice frame overall. It has some great geometry numbers as well with a head angle of 65 degrees as well as a C-tube angle of 74.7. So a nice steeper C-tube angle and a slacker head tube angle to give you enough confidence on the trails while going downhill, but also an efficient enough climber uphill if you need to take this bike back up the hill. But now we can start going over some of the main components on this bike, starting with the suspension fork right here in the front. That's always a very important part of a mountain bike. And you can see on this bike, we do have the RockShox Recon Silver RL. You can see the Recon logo right there. This is a solo air spring fork, so it does use air instead of a spring. So you're gonna pump it up right there and you can adjust it to your specific weight and your riding style and all that so that's a lot better than a spring fork this fork specifically does have the motion control damper from rock shocks which is really good it also has a locker right here on the right side which you can just turn to make the fork fully rigid it does have some clicks as you can hear to basically dial in how much compression you want. This fork does use boost 110 spacing in the front, which is pretty much standard for mountain bikes. And of course we do have a tapered head tube on this bike. So this is a tapered fork as well, which makes it just stronger and better for mountain biking in general. And an interesting thing about this bike is actually the wheel set itself. So on Trek's official website, it does state that the bike comes with Bond Trigger Line Comp 30 rims, which are tubeless ready and 28 hole Presta valve pretty generic rims from Bontrager. However, on this bike, you can see right here that the bike is actually coming with the E13 LG1EN rims, which are the Enduro entry-level rims from E13. 
Um, they're basically a like-for-like -like rim according to Trek as compared to the Linecom 30. Uh, so you can see the E13 brand right there. And they are also an aluminum rim with a 30 millimeter inner diameter. So pretty nice rims overall. E13 is a good brand, so I'm not complaining about that at all. And then for the tires, we have the Bontrager XR4 Team Issue tires, which are very good as well. There's an XR4 Team Issue in the front and in the rear, and they are the exact same size at 29 inches in diameter and 2.6 inches wide. Uh, I've raved about this in my previous video on the Roscoe 8, but I definitely love this tire and the width that they chose. This is a great width for trail riding, which makes this bike an even more proper trail hardtail for 2022, and I am in love with that. Now, while I'm talking about the wheel set, I'll also mention the hubs. So as you can see, they are Shimano branded in the front and rear. They are center locking hubs, which is great to see. So in the front, we have the Shimano MT400 with the Boost 110, as mentioned before. And in the rear, we got the Shimano MT510 with Boost 148 and that 12 millimeter through axle going right through the back. So a great hub set. But now let's move on to a very important part of any bike, which is definitely this beautiful drivetrain right here. So this is mainly a Shimano Dior M6100 drivetrain. So a one by 12 from Shimano. And that's a great drivetrain overall. I love this drivetrain. But as you can see right up in the front, we do have a Praxis Cadet crank. Uh, now on Trek's website, it does state that it comes with the Shimano Dior MT511 crank, which has 30 teeth, but this one also has 30 teeth. It's basically a like for like uh, crank set. I do think the Shimano Dior would, be, would have been a little bit better, but the Praxis Cadet is not bad at all. And then the bike uses the Shimano Dior M6100 uh, 12-speed chain to bring you back to the cassette, which is an amazing Shimano Dior, and it has 10 to 51 teeth, so a very wide range. Um, pretty much everything you would need for mountain biking. This is like one of the widest range cassettes that uh, any company offers currently. And then you can see right here, we have a very nice looking Shimano Dior rear derailleur, which is also the M6100. It does have this clutch mechanism right here to add tension on the chain. So when you engage it, the chain, chain will be a lot more taut and it'll keep it on the bike a lot better. Okay, but now let's talk about the dropper post that is spec'd on this bike, the seat post and the seat. Uh, the seat is a normal uh, Bontrager Arvada with steel rails, pretty typical on most Trek mountain bikes. And then the dropper post on Trek's website, uh, it says it's a Trans X dropper post, but uh, in this case, it looks like we have the Bontrager line dropper post, which is basically a like for like as well. So we have a kind of a plastic lever right here, nothing too special or crazy, but does the job. And then back here, we do have the dropper post itself, which has 150 millimeters of travel in this medium large size. And you can see when I push the lever right now, it'll activate a bunch of travel right there. As you can see, it's very high up there. All right, but now let's talk about the brakes on this bike. You can see the other side of this bike uh, looks pretty nice as well. Nothing too special on this side. It looks pretty much the same. But as you can see, uh, we have the Shimano MT200 brake levers on here which are very common you see these on trek mountain bikes so you can see them on the trek marlin 8 and marlin 7 um, which is kind of unfortunate since this is like 800 dollars more than the marlin 7 um, so if i did have any complaints on this bike i think it would definitely be the brake set but the mt200s are not too bad they are two pistons so for what this bike is designed for i think they're not going to be good enough because they will holds you back a little bit won't let you go as fast or as hard as you might want to but you can check them out right here uh, you, get, you guys have all seen these before if you've seen my channel they're pretty typical one nice thing is definitely the rotors though you'll definitely be fine keeping these on your bike if you switch out the brakes because these are 180 millimeter diameter rotors and they are center locking so we've got a 180 in the front and a 180 in the rear right here and you can kind of see the frame right here the way it bends out to accommodate that brake right there just the way trek designed it. it looks a little funky but it is what it is and now we can talk about some of the finishing components on this bicycle like the handlebar and stem and grips so the grips are pretty generic but we do have a Bontrager rhythm comp handlebar which is just a an alloy handlebar uh, 31.8 millimeter clamp diameter and a 15 millimeter rise on this one and it is 780 millimeters wide so definitely a very wide handlebar in this medium large frame size but that's great because you'd rather have a wider handlebar for mountain biking than a narrower one to get better control. And you can always cut it down if it's too wide for you. And then we got the stem right here, which is a pretty generic Bontrager uh, stem as well. Also an alloy component, and it has a seven degree rise, as you can see, kind of going up there. So definitely a generic uh, cockpit on this bike, but 
that's not the biggest deal. It's more important that you have some nice drivetrain and wheel components and suspension fork and all that. And it does have pretty good components so far. I'm liking most of the stuff on this bike. Uh, I think it's a great value for the money. I've mentioned before in other videos of the Roscoe lineup that if I were to get a Roscoe, I would definitely get the Roscoe 7 because I feel like it's the best value for the money and you can always upgrade parts as you wish. And on that note, I've actually bought one of these. So uh, uh, proving my point there that I do think this one is the best value, I'd have purchased a Roscoe 7. Uh, I have it on order. I've had it on order for quite some time now. I'm still waiting for it. But yeah, I'll make a video on that and trail ride the crap out of it when I actually get with that bike in person. So that'll be really fun. So definitely look out on my channel for that video. Should be uh, in the next few months or so. But now it's finally time to get this bike out on a test ride. I'm really excited to see how it feels. Obviously I'm gonna only test it on the road because this is going to be a customer's bike eventually and we'll give it a nice little test ride just to see how all the components feel and it'll give you like my initial impressions. So let's go do that right now. Okay, test riding. Woo. The Roscoe 7. Wow, I completely forgot how playful this bike is. Just getting on it, you immediately want to just start swerving and jumping and throwing it around. It just feels perfect for that kind of riding style. Come on. Okay, let's see how well it climbs uphill. Should be just fine with that 1x12. Yeah, this is great. Easy climbing up this hill. Shifting is definitely not bad at all. This is a good drivetrain. Really don't need any upgrades right there. Testing out the brakes right now. Yeah, I mean, they definitely stopped the bike because of those wider rotors you got on there, but uh, you can tell that these brakes just don't feel as high of quality as what you may want for mountain biking these days. The handlebars themselves are very wide and definitely great for this bike. I like how wide they are. Let's see if I can get some speed on this bike here. So I got the fork. Definitely is a heavier bike with these big mountain tires. So if you're going to use this as a commuter, definitely going to be a little slower than other options like the Excalibur or whatever, but you still could do it. It just feels like a heavier bike for sure on the road. This dropper post uh, works perfectly. Yeah, overall, like I still agree with my decision that this is the best uh, Roscoe for your money because all you really have to do is upgrade the brakes, maybe the suspension fork if you want to, to make it a very killer whew, machine. <laughs> but yeah, overall, not much more I can say about this bike. I definitely really like it and I'm happy with my decision to order one. And part of the reason why I won't get a Roscoe 8 or 9 is just because of that price point. It's just too high for me. Like I would much rather have this one spend the least amount to get this nice Roscoe frame and all the parts on it and then just slowly upgrade the parts as they wear out. But yeah, I'd rather spend my money towards getting the, the frame itself with this Roscoe 7 and then just making bigger upgrades on, on the parts that I want to upgrade. But that is it for this video, everyone. Thank you so, so, so much for watching and joining me on this wonderful morning. I'm very grateful for each and every one of you watching this video right now. So thank you so much and remember to keep biking.